all you do is just switch the fridge on, switch it to battery, yeah. and then when the engine's running, it will provide 12 volts to the... So it's alarming now because there's no car attached to it. Exactly, yeah. So there's no car, there's no, uh, no engine running. Yeah. Okay, if it's doing that on the gas, that means the gas hasn't lit. Okay. Okay, so check the usual things. You have turned your gas on. You have got gas, so you could fire your cooker up just to make sure you've got gas running. Yeah. And all you do is just press that hazard button there, and that will re-attempt to light it. If okay. you haven't used it on gas for a while, there may be air in the system. So what, what it's doing is then failing on because there's, it's not detecting gas or not firing. So press that button again. It may take two or three attempts if you haven't fired upon gas for a while. Okay. Most people tend to run it on electric because when they pay for the pitch, usually the electric comes free with it. Yeah. All right. Doesn't mean you can use all the electric you can you can imagine that uh, some people do. All right. This here is your temperature range. All five lit. That's the coldest setting. Okay. So obviously it's coming out frozen butter. Then obviously it's too cold. So it all depends on the temperature outside to what mm. setting you need. Okay. Now it's beeping at me because I've left the door open. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your, free, your freezer, your freezer compartment will actually the the shelf and the door will actually come out if you want to. So if you don't want a freezer box, you just want to tour the fridge. Yeah. It will do that. Okay. I can shut up when I've shut it. Right. Okay, cooker. Just be careful with this. You can see that look when they open the grill door. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so if someone's disappeared in that end, just make sure they're aware that you're cooking. Yeah. Otherwise it could be a bit of a damage onto the door if you're not careful. Okay. The, on this you've got a 12 volt igniter. Okay. So obviously you don't need that for the electric. Obviously for the gas. Yeah. Okay, just pressing all that until it stays lit. Yeah. So you take your finger off, it goes out. Obviously you press it a bit longer. What you've also got is this button here, which lights up the oven. Yeah. Yeah, so don't think that's trying to ignite it, because that's just lighting the oven. Uh, lighting it up, as in light, not um, ignite. Right. On the... So all these others will ignite on that button. Yeah. The oven... You yes. press, press that control. Don't ask me why that that individually has to do that, but it's igniting everything else and trying to at the same time. If you look inside there, the flame for that is just for the as you can see for the little holes. So if you're looking for a oh, yeah. for a burner, that's it's underneath the, the yeah. that panel down there. Okay. Yeah. We'll see grill. Well, handle. Doing that very well. There we go. Yeah. Normally you wouldn't cook with that in there, but obviously just be careful where that is. Yeah. Right, with the with the lid, obviously being glass, be very careful, make sure it is cold before you put this down. Electric one, obviously you retain the heat a lot longer. So make sure that is cooled down. Obviously compared to these, that one will be longer. Yeah. What it also does, glass lid down, that shuts all the gas off to the to the cooker. So okay. if you're not trying to operate the grill with this down, it won't operate. Yeah. And you can see there's, there's a little note on there to say it will shut the gas off. That's so a safety, oven, grill. Sa safety, safety cut off, basically. Exactly, yeah. So to operate it, just make sure that it's fully back. Yeah. Okay. Microwave, glass plate. Do not travel with that in there. If that comes and goes on there, obviously you could be trouble. So sneak it there for now. My wife tends to put it in the bowl with a tea towel wrapped around it, stop it rattling about. Okay, to operate it, that on its own does nothing. Press the microwave button once, that's your power, so 100%, 50%, depending where you yeah. want to fire it on. Then press the microwave button again, and then you can turn that for seconds. Yeah. All right, then press start. Away it goes, or quick start and start button, goes up in minute increments. So if you want two minutes, just press it twice, and off it goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'm just trying to think where, must be that one. Here it is. Right, your solar panel, which I mentioned before, obviously sitting on the roof, that is your regulator there. So it's totally automatic, you don't need to switch anything on or off. It will automatically give it, as long as you've got daylight, it will do it. Yeah. Okay, obviously it's dark, it won't. Yeah. All right, the lights I'm um, showing on there at the moment, red light, that's showing it's giving the full 14 and a half volts at the moment, because the battery's slightly le uh, slightly down, or it turns green and obviously the ba battery's in better condition. The green light flashing underneath it, that's to say it's charging. Okay. There will be occasions when then lights go out, obviously one, it's dark, two, um, your battery obviously has been charged by the main mains and obviously it's in good condition or if you haven't got electric connected and your battery is obviously quite low then it, then two little lights will go out and save that much electric. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep it up so far. Yeah. Good. Still awake. Right. Bathroom. So your toilet. 
got an electric flush. Normally you hear that noise, that means the flush tank's empty. So you need to go and top it up. Yeah. Okay, so you need a bit more pink chemical and top it up with water. To use the toilet, you can see that one that's supposed to move like that, right? Because they're cleverly designed to fit in all sorts of spaces so you can manoeuvre it around to where your legs fit. To use it, open the wastegate, use it, flush it, close it back up again. Especially when driving. Hey, driving? <laughs> you definitely wonder why we're sitting on there when you're driving. Yeah. <laughs> right, with, if you remember about the tr trying to get the waste cassette out and it not wanting to come out, yeah. that, that's to do with that. Yeah. So if that is not fully closed, it's not going to come out. out yeah. Yeah, or if you force it, you may damage it. The other thing is, when you go and take that, or one of you goes and takes that waste cassette to be uh, emptied, at least make sure whoever's left in here knows Nose, that yeah. you've gone and taken yeah. that. So you don't want to be a little present left yeah. in Yeah. Okay. It's not the best of things to try and clean in there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Inside here is your Aldi expansion tank. Okay, you've got a minimum mark. Minimum mark. I just notice it's just slightly low, actually. There's a minimum mark and a maximum mark. When it's cold, make sure it's a finger width above the minimum mark. I'm seeing that, that's quite low actually, so I'll, I'll get the engineer to go what, top What is that, Aldi? That, that's, your, that's your expansion tank for your heating system. Oh, okay. So the, the glycol mixture yeah. that's been circulated around the van to heat the van, that's, that's the expansion tank for that. Okay. okay. And that gives you a level of what it is. Um, if you need to top it up, which we will do in a second, remove that, unscrew the top, you top it up with an antifreeze mix. Okay. okay, you can buy it in a shop already mixed if you wanted to. You could top it up with water if you're really stuck on site and you haven't got anything else. But obviously, when you're doing that, you're diluting it. Yeah. So you're going to need to top it up with antifreeze at some point. Okay. All right. So I'll get an engineer to come and sort it If you look under the bed, I'll see you There's a huge amount of space under there. Just yeah. be very careful. You do not want to be putting too much weight behind the behind the axle on the caravan because it'll want the tendency of the. Have you ever heard of snaking? Yeah. That's what that's when what happens normally is you've got a lot of weight at the back of the caravan, it's not correctly balanced. So if you've got a lot of weight back there, then obviously that can cause that. What you've also got down there, obviously your spare wheel, your step, you've got your cable in there as well, and winder handle, and you've also got a wheel nut spanner as well. Okay. Alright. Okay, what you've also obviously lights, plenty of lights in these vans. So you've got your spotlights, you've got a switch actually on them, and you can actually dim it from there. Okay, so there's a little wood oh, okay. yeah. nut at the back yeah, of that. Yeah. Also, you've got. I'm just trying to see where that is now. Oh, that's the floor light. So, just by my feet down here, you've got a nice little floor light, obviously, nighttime light. But you've also got this one here. Click on that, that switches the other lights off, which is a run across the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll leave that open just okay. to remind me. Right, shower, if you can see on that, it's you are limited to how much water you've got. If you've got just. Um, got your supply is just your Acarol, 40 litres of water is not going to last long. If you're sitting in there, or standing in there, and got the, the shower on flat out, it's not going to last long. Okay. One, the hot water that's coming from that tank is, you're drawing the hot water, as you're drawing the hot water, it's topping up with cold water, so hot water is not going to last too long. So obviously even with the boost function of increasing the temperature in there, it's obviously limited to how much water you've got. Obviously 40 litres of uh, Acarol, again, is limited. So what they, they have on these little things, uh, gadgets, one is air in train, so it gives you, still gives you a pressure and using less water. And what it's also got is this. So you can, you can wash a bit, switch it on, off. So oh, yeah. on, off, on, off, instead of just full flow. Okay, be very careful, obviously for winter, any water that's trapped in here, obviously this is plastic. Again, what any, any watering caravans can cause damage if it freezes. So the best thing to do is take the shower head off and drain it down for in winter. Okay. Obviously you've just got a mixer tap there, same with the mixer tap here. Mm -hmm. So they're the two taps you need to check before you start switching water pumps on. Because so, if you can imagine that, it's facing that direction, you've opened all these for draining it for winter, mm -hmm. and that's pointing this direction, you switch the water pump on, you're going to have all this lovely, uh, lovely and wet. Okay? Yeah. Right. I'll just turn that just in case, which I've done before now. Right, I'm just trying to think anything else now. Radio, obviously sitting in there. So it is, you can plug a USB into there if you want to, charge your phone or connect the music to it. And I'll put this that one there, so that also goes for the source as well, USB, um, AF, AM, FM. 
I'm so, not sure why they still have AM because I don't know if there's much action. No, it's not worth actually listening on AM anymore. If there were, actually was in the first place, but um, searches left and right there. Um, you've also got a single play CD there as well with the eject button there. Yeah. So you can preset ones as well, and you can also bring the front off the radio and keep it in a safe place if you really wanted to. Okay. Okay. Light switches in this this end of the van. So you got your splash splash back. Oh, cool. The one here. On the yeah. there, underneath the locker. The one for that you would think would be closer, but it isn't. Which is probably good. Oh, that is the right one. I think it's the one above my head as well. Yeah. Warning light. So that will switch you on, yeah. on and off. That one is for above the lockers on that bit there. Yeah. Okay. What I didn't mention, obviously, there's there's further, as I said, there is a lot more involved with this control panel. Your dimmable lights, which are across the, the top of your lockers and in the bedroom. So if I actually switch the master switch on for the or off, switch it back on again, you see it's come across the bottom of your now, dim yeah. level. Yeah. It's set to 50% at the moment. If I press the select button, which is like the one that looks pointing towards the screen, you see that now? Yeah. It's going up in 5% five, 5 increments. Yeah. Now, now at 100%. If I push it again, it drops down to 5 you yeah. see that dim look. So you can set that wherever you want to. With the app, you can also set that on a slider. You can yeah. actually dim the lights up and down on the slider as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, on, there's a light switch on the front there. That is for the the floor light here. So the one next to the two blank ones there. Yeah. That one there. That's it. So if you're looking at that and you're sitting there playing with that switch, thinking, "Well, where's that light?" and nothing's happening, it's this one that's on the end of you. Because if you're there, you're not going to be able to see that. Yeah. Okay. Um, handbook. Okay. So obviously that's got all the information you may want to know, and probably a lot of information you don't want to know. Obviously it's worth a read, obviously especially if you're struggling to sleep at night. So what you've also got in here, obviously every individual appliance has its own book as well. So even the toilet has its own book. Um, what you've also got, you can't see for me, so it's sitting in the bottom of the... If you had a 13-pin plug, so the plug that you connect the car to, yeah. so it's a 13-pin. Yeah. This is a tool to realign it. So when you plug your plug into the back of your car, when you unplug it, you, it's, it's a turn and pull. So if you pull it too early, it will go out of line by a fraction and you cannot get it back in the car. So that is the tool to realign it, realign okay. the caravan plug. Okay. All right. If you forget and leave that at home, it's going to be really awkward. I'll tell you now, because I had one customer and um, they rang up and says, we can't get our plug connected to the car. I says, you remember that little blue tool? Uh, yeah. Where is it? Oh. They take the whole pack out, left it at home. Yeah. All they needed was that. So do not leave that at home. Yeah. You can take the rest of the rubbish out, but that, that is obviously very important. I'm just thinking what. There's, there's usually little baggies are sitting in and obviously so they've, they've all fallen out. A aerial adapters. Yeah. So you've got a different aerial point up there. Gas barbecue point. That is what you connect to your, if you get one, uh, pipe. You duly tip your pipe to that. That just clicks into the outside here. And that connects to your gas that's in there. Okay. Okay. So I'll put them back in there so it doesn't get uh, spread out. Do you, this aerial thing, do you, do you yes. push it up and down, do you? It is, yeah. So it's a directional. Get that one sitting in there. It's what is called a directional aerial. Yeah. Okay. Got about that sitting up there. Right. So to so operate it, loosen that nut. Yeah. Have a look. See where everybody else is pointing their aerial. Yeah. That's, that's likely good that's, indication. You, you yeah. might have a good idea. It might have a good signal or a, a reasonable signal. Slide it up. You can see there. It's got these indicators. It says indicators usually facing the direction of travel. That also indicates the front of the aerial. Okay. Okay. So you can position where that wherever you want to. Obviously, lift it up, lock it off. Then have a, also have a look. See if you can on this one tilt tilt the top of the aerial as well. Have a look. See if, what everybody else is doing. If it's yeah. got it horizontal. That's on the green. If it's they've tipped it up, all you need to do is just spin that round, which is really fiddly. Oh, okay. Until it says vertical. So that at the moment now is that angle. Yeah. Alright. But obviously before you travel home, make sure it's that you wind it all the way back yeah. down again. And make sure you bring it all the way down as well. Because you definitely don't want to be catching that on the way home on any trees or not unlikely on low bridges, but trees obviously could be overhanging. Yeah. Okay, what you've also got at the right at the back there is your signal booster. Okay. Okay, the on-off button, which is obviously a really awkward place to get to, which is just above the V there if you need to. 
um, if you need to switch it off that is okay yeah so it all depends on where you are how good a signal you're going to get right if you're in the middle of Wales you might not get a signal yeah so it doesn't matter how good your signal what you may find on some sites they have what is they have a, a booster aerial yeah so your aerial may not pick it up but their booster aerial probably will you've got a fixing uh, fixing um, something like that inside your battery box okay just underneath where you connect your electric there's the, this very similar to that yeah which is that's what that is connected to you can if you get the cable usually the sites obviously provide them or probably you have to pay for yeah um, on your suit if you've got on a super pitch the bollard which you connect your electric to may also have an aerial point okay. you can connect your aerial to that or yeah. connect your van to that and you may have a signal if you're really desperate to watch it uh britain's got talent or whatever yeah all right hmm. and where's the 12 volts here then so that, that's that's a 12 volt socket okay so, so some people who tend to go on um, sites which have got no electric they still want to watch the telly you can have t tvs that have a 12 volt socket or okay. a 12 volt plug on them okay otherwise you got your, obviously you got your 240 there yeah that connects to okay your, t your, your tv bracket is inside there so this obviously receives a tv bracket so i'll just show you that and if you can see that, that plate there, that screws to the back of your TV. Yeah. And so that screws to the back of your TV. You should yeah. have screws actually yeah. on the TV itself. Then what you all it does is that just slides into that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Do not travel with the TV on it, because if that comes out of them... Oh, and does that fit in there as well? Yeah. The same? Yeah, so it's the same, same type fit. Okay. It Okay. Right, well, happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, there's a lot, there's obviously a lot to learn. Yeah. But um, obviously, YouTube is is really useful. Yeah. You know, I, I could fill you with uh, lots of rubbish in your head, but it wouldn't do you any good because you, you'll you'll forget more of it than you actually remember. Your your fan. I'm just looking up at that. So this is an extractor fan. Yeah. Just to start it, you just press the button in the centre there. It can extract air out, or can bring air in. This is the vent opener. Yeah. Okay, you can speed the fan up by pressing that button there. So that's taking air out now. If you want to slow it down, press the opposite button. Okay. And then that will bring air in the other way as well if you wanted to. Okay. All right. Just obviously very important that, um, well obviously you can switch it off, but when you're traveling, make sure things like roof lights are shut. Yeah. anything left open i've seen one or two of these on the on the road traveling away yeah. traveling around okay. the other important thing obviously with roof blinds make sure they're they before you go to beep go to beep go to sleep and um, make sure you shut these because four o'clock in the morning or not so much now perhaps but in you'll have sun blaring through there and if you really wanted to stay asleep you probably won't be okay. so these ones yeah. Oh, so something like that. We have also got fly blind to operate this. You've got this button, you just press that button in. That releases that. You can just slide that up into position there or to there. Just be careful if it gets a bit windy. These have got a tendency to mm. slide off if you're not careful. Just make sure you pick that all the way up. Okay? Got a tendency that sometimes they stick like that. And if the wind does catch it, it will rip it off. Just push that up. Make sure that pops out. Mm, okay. All right. Yep. Good. And what about the because this is a four berth, isn't it? How does yeah. that? Yeah. So actually... all you've got these slats come out all the way to that position there. Yeah. So that locks in to stop it obviously pushing back. All you do, you can see these have got a slight mound Bol there. Bolster, such. Yeah. Yeah. So if you put them in the middle, you're gonna have a really comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Not. Uh, what the best thing to do is turn these over so that is facing to the wall. Yeah. So it's upside down. Same that side and just. Bring these into the centre, so okay. the backs go into the centre. You may, well, my wife tends to, she suffers with a back. She, we, we put a mattress topper over it, makes yeah. it a lot more comfortable. Otherwise, okay. it can't. Some people are okay with it, but it uh, can be not so comfortable. Not, so com not, not as comfortable as you So bed basically, at home. do you Obviously, sleep that bed like that? Really comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's head, head to toe across. Yeah. Yeah, or the other way around. Yeah, much. yeah. It doesn't matter which. And if you've got a couple of kids, you don't need to do anything. Yeah, that's it. You can there. just have a little, yeah, little single, that's easy. Okay? Yeah. Happy? Okay. Good. Right, what we've got here now, 
before you start jumping out the, out the door. Uh, a little test to see if you've been listening. So all this is, apart from that's my bit of paper, it's just to confirm that I've explained, hopefully you've taken some of it in, uh, or all of it in. Um, all I'm going to do is read through these, tick these just to make sure, obviously one, I've explained it. Um, it may prompt you for questions, you think, well, what do you mean by that? Obviously ask. Um, Chris Etchin, are, are you aware of Chris? Have you heard of Chris? Yeah, Can that's we... the chassis, isn't it? Yeah, that's your, that's your chassis number. Yeah. Well, Chris actually is. Well, Chris Etchin is your chassis number on the windows. Um, it's not etching now, they're on little stickers. You've got the main one which is there, there is, is another one inside. So that's extra security on, on the actual uh, identification of the van. Um, Chris, what that is, is similar to DVLA and cars. Yeah. Chris is the caravan version of. Yeah. So we register that for you and then you will receive the documentation, I don't know, two or three weeks. Yeah. Okay. So have a read through these, tick through these. Most of them should apply. We will run through the running gear as such when we connect up to the car. I need to sign there, that's to do with the wheel nuts. Obviously, it's your yeah. responsibility to make sure you are checking them regularly. Yeah. I will check them before you leave. Okay. okay. Tick through all of them. Same with the next page. Read and print sign there. Issue page, if, it, if you're not happy with anything, obviously point it out to yourself, but if you're not happy with any, anything that's it's not clean enough, any extra, it should have been fitted or supplied, or service issues. So if there's anything that looks like there's a door hanging off, well, there shouldn't be, but if there is, point it out to yourself and we'll try and get that uh, uh, fixed before you go. Yeah. Okay, but if there's no issues, which hopefully there won't be, just write no issues there, then just print and sign there. And uh, um, if there are anything pops up over the next, is it 12 yeah. months? Yeah, so? right, I'm just coming to that one. Oh, okay. Right. Black page, then what we do, obviously you have got your, you've got your warranty. Yeah. So you've got at least, I think it's three years manufacture, and then you've also got 10 year um, water ingress. Okay. But what we do, we uh, we won't be able to do that now. Are you stopping up on site? Oh, no, right. there wasn't any space. Oh, that's a shame. Um, because I would think now service will have all disappeared because it's five o'clock. Um, what we'll have to do is uh, I'll get, probably go to give you a call and, and, and sort that date out. Okay, what it is, is approximately 30 days from now. So normally we would book your appointment, which would be around about 30 days from now. So your first 30 days of uh, ownership, hopefully you'll be going out and using it yeah. that, that period of time. Yeah. Obviously when you're sitting here, you may come across other things or that some you're things that really you're not happy, happy with. Yeah. So what you would do, obviously give us a call, then you would bring it back on that date, and everything will be sorted. Okay. All right? okay. Yeah. Then obviously you've still got your warranty and everything else that yeah. covers that. All right? Yeah. So if you want to go through that now, have a good look around your van, make sure you're happy. I'm just, uh, hopefully I'm going to grab someone who may have got some, uh, I'll put some out of these top of your head, fluid up as well. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I'll just be out here for, uh, okay. in a second.